there is something that goes on in the garment making uh, industry, the sewing world, that uh, doesn't get spoken about. It goes unseen, it goes unheard, and that is just how much testing actually is involved in the garment creation process. Even for us home sewers at home, I know for myself how much testing I do of all different kinds, and we'll go, that's what this whole video is about, is the types of things that I test so that you can realize that there is, this actually happens, and all the things that you could test so that when you go to do your uh, garment, it's not the first time you're doing it, so you can ensure that your sewing turns out beautiful, like the first time around, right? Although the whole point is that it's not the first time. Let's, let's go through the whole list. Welcome back my lovely ladies and gents, my sewing friends. It is always lovely to see your smiling faces. Now, if we are actually just meeting for the first time, welcome. My name is Evelyn Wood and uh, what we do here is vintage sewing skills for modern day sewing so that you can keep improving your sewing just and be able to create anything that you want, just like you know our home sewers did in the past. If it sounds like something you're interested in, please do hit the subscribe button and the little bell so that YouTube actually knows that you want to see my other videos. Uh, so what we're talking about today is something that actually I think doesn't get talked about anywhere near enough. I almost see no sort of discussions about this uh, unseen, unheard topic, and that is how much testing goes into sewing, uh, so, like in the garments. And now I speak from my own experience. It's not that like even in all the YouTube videos that you see of all these people doing things and creating things, uh, and I know for mine, it's not that it's intentionally not shown or talked about. It's just that when you get to a certain point, it's a given that this is just what you do. And then, of course, you know, if you're teaching someone, you're like, oh, no, of course, you have to test that first before you do that. And then, you know, if you've got a beginner, you, you just look at this person telling you this and you're like, no, there was no obviously about this whole testing thing. I'm supposed to do this? I didn't know. Uh, what? <laughs> you know what I mean, right? I know because that's exactly how I felt. It seems very obvious once you get to a certain uh, level in sewing and, and be, you've been doing it for a amount of time, but when you first start, you have no idea that these are the things that you should be doing and the amount of things that you can test and that well, you can kind of feel good about doing it and not feel like you're wasting your time and that a garment just magically uh, turns out perfect the first time. That isn't the case. If you test all these things that we're going to talk about along the way, it's technically then not really the first time that you're doing any of this and therefore that's how you get the first time garment looking great because it's not actually the first time, right? Okay. So there are a big list of things that I have. This is inspired by uh, comments that I see uh, coming through from other people. I, I assume I get the feeling they're more experienced as well and they say the same thing. Testing the things, test the things is the key to getting great looking sewing first up and by some of the discussions that happened inside Vintage Sewing School this week uh, and we'll talk about that later. So let's start. This list is, is in no particular order except in order of uh, like subjects. I actually think some of the more important things are at the end but we'll get there later. Let's start from the top and work our way down. So the first things that I look at testing always are I test my machine after every time I rethread it. So overlocker or straight stitch machine, every time it gets rethreaded, I just quickly go through and do a few stitches to make sure that it's all working and functioning properly because so often, you know, the thread's just not threaded properly and it's nothing you can see. Maybe it's just not sitting in the disc right. Maybe the bobbin's not loaded properly, whatever. It always happens that something tangles. You don't want that to happen on your actual garment. So always test uh, the stitches after, like just test your machine for the stitches after you've re-threaded anything. And you always want to test the stitches for the type of fabric that you're using. So every time, every new fabric I get, I will just test the stitches to make sure that they're looking good. So if you've got a knit fabric, for example, you really have to test your settings and make sure you've got everything worked out prior to when you start sewing on your seam. You don't want your first front seams to be uh, the ones that you're testing on and are all like wonky and had to be unpicked and a little bit 
you know, you don't want that. So just a quick little test on the actual fabric you're using. We'll make sure the stitches and all the settings and all the everything is perfect for that fabric before you start. And then you also want to test your seam finishes. So you might be trying a different type of seam finish, whether it's your overlock, your serger stitch, whether you're doing a zigzag, whether you're doing a felled seam, doesn't matter what seam finish you're choosing. I would always do a quick little test run on the fabric that I'm using to see how it goes. Do I need to change the settings? Is it going to look nice? And just see and test because the amount of times I change things from there is very, very often. So I do this before I even get to start sewing my project, of course. I just test out the seam finish to make sure it is as nice and perfect as I want it to look in my garment. I don't want all the mistakes to happen in my garment because I hate looking at messy seams myself on, on my sewing and I, you might be the same too. The other thing I always test is the hem finishes. So whether you're doing a little double turn hem, a little, uh, like maybe a hand stitch hem, whatever it is, I always test it and test it on a similar uh, area. So a similar grain, a similar shape to what you'll be sewing. For example, this is a, I have a few examples here because this came up while I was working on this project. How many little test samples I have sitting right here that I have used. So for my neckline edge here, I wanted to use a little uh, double turn hem under this as a double turn hem. And I needed to know how big or tiny I could actually get that hem, right? How, what, how will the fabric actually fold over? How will my machine grab the fabric as it goes around? Every fabric is different. This has got a little texture to it in stripes. So it's like every time is different. How, how, like this is around a curve as well. How much do I need to help it go around this curve uh, in doing that double turn hem? So everything is different every time. So I this is my actual sample of my little double turn hem that I did to test it before I actually went to my real one here. And so you can see that obviously it's going to turn out great when I get to my garment because I did all the rubbish ones on this test. <laughs> uh, let's come back to sewing bits in a minute. Uh, the other thing that you really want to test is the iron. <laughs> so the iron temperature. Give it a test. You don't want to make those crude, horrible mistakes that everyone has made in pretty much when you first start out, everybody uses polyester to start and has definitely melted fabric. We've all done it. I definitely know that I have done that. Uh, and so test out the actual iron temperature, how much steam the, the fabric likes and doesn't like so that you know what temperature your iron needs to be on for that fabric so you don't get any shiny marks because once you like ruin it with the iron, there is no going back. You can't unpick or unsew that or un-iron it. It's, it's done if it's melted or anything like that. No, so always test the iron temperature for the fabric that you're using. And then while we're still at the iron, Test the interfacing. So test how hot your fusing may, might need to actually be to go onto the fabric. So test maybe, maybe the uh, interfacing is uh, too heavy. Uh, and once you sort of test it and it feels like cardboard, then that means that the interfacing is too heavy for that fabric. And so then you can obviously choose a different interfacing before you go on and make your garment turn into cardboard. Again, guess how I know that one? Yeah, we've all done that before. Had the cardboard facings that just a lot. Yeah, anyway, we don't want that. So if you just test your fusing first, you'll know whether it's appropriate for the garment that you're making in the fabric that you're using, of course. Let's go back to the sewing testing here because again, uh, this, uh, half made up project I have is a great example. Uh, I have already uh, completed the neckline uh, finish on here. But guess what? Here is my test sample of how I decided how I would actually do that finish. So I didn't know whether I wanted to, how I wanted to stitch on this lace. I didn't know, I ended up doing a zigzag stitch up the top, zigzag stitch down the bottom, uh, and that held everything in nicely. It allowed the lace to be able to stretch and it gave a sort of a casing in the middle so I could weave my ribbon in and out. But guess what? I tested it here first so that I knew how far I had to do the stitches, uh, how wide and narrow the actual uh, zigzag stitch needed to be, how long it needed to be so that it would be invisible on the lace and so I could still get the functionality of weaving the uh, 
uh, ribbon through to use as a casing. So I tested all that and worked all of that out before. Uh, I actually tested it this long and I've unpicked, you can see, this is just all the threads left. This is where I unpicked the, uh, the lace to obviously reuse. Don't ask me why I left this tiny little bit here, but anyway. Uh, I tested all of that so that now my garment you know, when you see the video of this, which is coming uh, later on, probably at the end of the month, um, it looks perfect. And it, but it's just like, you can't just show all these tiny little tests that you do. And this is why you don't see it a lot, but it happens. Trust me, this happens. And so the other uh, thing that you want to test is anytime you do uh, sort of sewing techniques, if you do uh, buttonholes, always test a like do a test buttonhole first if you do a casing test your casing to make sure it is exactly the right uh, width to fit that ribbon that elastic in whatever it is so that it's nice and neat it's not too big it's not too small you want it just right so test those other techniques that first get there is I, I have never put buttonholes on a garment and have not tested it first and put push the button through the hole so it, you know it's exactly the right size. This is where uh, my student inside um, Vintage Sewing School, one of my students, Nikki, she actually posted about some buttonholes that she was testing. This is a great real life example. So she uh, tested a buttonhole with fusing on the fabric she was using, replicating everything that was there, she tested it perfectly. She's a good student. And uh, she tested with interfacing, without interfacing, so she could look and decide. And she knew that with interfacing was going to turn out much better and it was the right width. So then she went ahead and did it on her actual garment. And you know what? It turned out so good. So good. All because she tested it all first and got all of the practice ones, all of the, let's say, rubbish ones. I call them my, my, my rubbish ones done first before she got there. So what else do we test? I test uh, the pattern and the fit. Test by doing a toile. So a toile or a mock-up. Uh, I test, I always say that when you start sewing, uh, um, your toile is for two reasons. So when you very first start sewing, your toile serves as a purpose, as a practice run for the actual garment. So in sewing it all up, so you know what pieces go together, you're getting used to your machine, you're just practicing putting the whole item together, doing the zip, doing the all the different skills you need. It's all practice for the real one that you'll do later. And then as you go to the next sort of level, once you've kind of got all that down pat and you're kind of going up the next level, your toile or your mock-up serves as a different purpose because then you're actually doing it so you can check the fit. As you sort of layer up on your skills, then you're looking at that toile, that mock-up for fit. So then you can tweak things and make sure it's all fitted before you go into your real garment. And then when you even level up again, you're actually then uh, using that, that toile, that mock-up for design to make sure the design flows and that it's all aesthetically, you know, flowing very nicely in the design and you can still make changes before you get to your real one. Testing always. The other thing that I test that I think gets missed a lot is I test the fit of the garment along the way in what I call an outside shell. So this is where, actually this is almost kind of it, you kind of have a, the basic shell of the garment is all constructed and put together. So you have your darts done, your tucks done, the backs and the fronts all sewn together, the skirt top and back sort of all put together and you try that on and now don't miss stay stitching or anything like that. Perhaps that's another video for another day. Um, and try it on so then you can test the fit before you do all the finishes. So this is before you have finished off the armholes or finished the neckline or done the hems uh, and just do a little check along the way. So I always test the fit along the way uh, and it's several times usually but at least, uh, at least once in that outside shell stage. Whether it is a refashion or a sew from scratch garment, pretty much all of these things, most of these things get tested on every single project that I do. But I bet it's something that you never thought happens. That much testing goes on, right? I would love to know. <laughs> so uh, I hope it kind of gives you permission to slow down a little and to realize it's not a waste of time to do all this sort of testing and that maybe it opens your eyes into the things that you could test uh, before you go ahead as well. And I promise you when you do, this is how you're guaranteed for your real garment, as we often say, for your garments to look really, really good and your sewing to improve instantly without sort of having to muck around 
around and, and throw out garments all the time. Just these small little tests along the way make a big difference. So leave me a comment below. Are you a tester? Or do you actually have a, a cautionary tale about testing uh, for all of our other community members? Leave those cautionary tales down below because I love reading them. Do make sure you go read all those comments as well because there should be a wealth of knowledge as we all share our sewing tips and tricks. These are just some of the ones that I mostly uh, use. Let me know uh, which ones of these are your most, like that you test the most as well that you use or there's some others that I missed out. I would love to hear them below. Do like this video if you liked it and uh, well, until next time of course. Actually, it'll be uh, Tuesday, Tuesdays, Tuesdays and Fridays now. A video two days a week for a little while. We're doing an experiment. So until the next one, happy sewing and bye.